Did you know that your body makes its own hydrogen sulfide? And did you know that this hydrogen sulfide, this homemade endogenous stuff, is really, really good, protective, and even anti-inflammatory? I know, it's crazy talk. I'm gonna lose some people here, but just hear me out. This homemade hydrogen sulfide is the topic of a lot of research because it is so freaking rad. It protects your endothelial cells in your blood vessels and therefore can help prevent things like heart disease and atherosclerosis. It's, it suppresses inflammation and scavenges free radicals. It promotes angiogenesis, which is the formation of new blood vessels. It might reduce the risk of stroke. It modulates the immune system. It's neuroprotective. It might help detoxify the brain. I mean, this is crazy stuff to a point that they are talking about this in research, hoping to find drugs that can increase endogenous hydrogen sulfide production. So let's get into the pathways that are involved here and theoretically give you some tools, what you could do if you thought that you had too much of this really awesome chemical in your cells. Now you might have picked up on the snarky, sarcastic tone at the end of that last clip, and it's for good reason. I really don't know what would constitute having too much hydrogen sulfide in your cells and in your body. So this is something that you're not really gonna be able to diagnose per se. And I know the way that some of you are gonna to want to do that, and it is rubbish. If you think that you can go into your genetics in 23andMe, find a CBS snip, and therefore deduce that you have too much of this coming from your cells, I've got news for you. Because I am a homozygous carrier of CBS SNPs, and I can tolerate high sulfur foods, and I can tolerate cysteine supplements like a freaking champion. So on paper, I look like somebody who would not be able to tolerate sulfur, or would have too much of this hydrogen sulfide pathway activated, but I have found it to be quite the contrary for me as an individual. I have found that my glutathione levels are better maintained and I just feel better when I have a little bit of N-acetylcysteine in my supplement routine. So before you run out here thinking that you're gonna diagnose this and this is gonna be an actual issue for you, I hesitate to recommend doing that. But knowing that some of those people will do that, let's get into the mechanics of this anyhow, just for fun. So as we talked about in my previous video where we linked in MTHFR and folate into this conversation, we're gonna start at the bottom of that cycle with homocysteine. And at the time in that first video, I just drew a simplified version of this and I said the next step down was the transsulfuration pathway, which is still accurate, that's still true, but I drew it out in a little bit more detail here. So the first step is where some of you might be a little bit familiar. So this is going to be that CBS SNP that I mentioned, or that CBS pathway. So the CBS enzyme converts homocysteine into cystathionine, and also, we'll make a little secondary arrow, we're also gonna get some hydrogen sulfide. This is a point of debate, again, mostly because they're trying to come up with drugs that will alter these pathways and their activity. But right now their thought is that the CBS enzyme itself is the primary producer of hydrogen sulfide in human cells. So this seems to be the bigger of the three. Then we convert cystothionine into cysteine, which some of you might be familiar with because of the supplement and acetylcysteine. But this is done by a different enzyme, Ooh, wrong color marker. And this one is CSE. I've never heard people talk about a SNP in this particular pathway, but I'm sure it exists. I'm just not as familiar with it. And as in the other step, yes, we're going from cystothionine down to cysteine, but we also get some hydrogen sulfide from here. And then we land at cysteine, which is an amino acid that a lot of us are gonna be familiar with. And again, you can get this from cysteine supplements or cysteine in N-acetylcysteine or from food. And then it's the cysteine that gets converted into other stuff. One that I want to really highlight for you here is glutathione, which I've just abbreviated as GSH. I have a whole like 30 minute video all about the ins and outs of glutathione and how I got my glutathione levels to go up with supplementing with NAC. But what I want to stress the importance of is that glutathione is your master detoxifier and your master antioxidant. It's also an immune regulator or immunomodulator, I guess you could call it, and it's anti-inflammatory. 
So glutathione can be a really big part of what's keeping people unwell. Is it the only part? No, I would never make that claim, but I have found that glutathione or supporting it with things like NAC can be helpful for some people. So that is just worthy of consideration. This molecule, this glutathione thing is really, really important. And if you haven't watched that video of mine about glutathione, I'd encourage you to go check it out. Then we're also gonna make taurine from cysteine. Now, again, some of you might be familiar with this, but taurine is one of the amino acids that we can use in bile flow. So glycine being the other one, we can conjugate our bile acids to taurine, and this is really important for getting that bile flow going, which a lot of people use as an antimicrobial, but also it helps you digest your fat and detoxify through your gut. So taurine, also pretty big deal. Now, I drew this one in, even though it's probably minor by comparison, but I wanted to make mention of one more enzyme before we get into the nitty gritty of what you might do about this. From cysteine, you also can make sulfite, and then you would convert that into sulfate using an enzyme called SUOX, S-U-O-X. The reason this comes up sometimes is because of the conversation with molybdenum. So here's how I was taught this when I became acutely enchanted by SNPs and this sort of stuff about 10 or so years ago. The way that it was taught to me is that you go from homocysteine down using CBS. We didn't really talk about this at the time. So you use CBS and then what is said is that CBS can be a quick enzyme and it happens very fast. And you're sending down these intermediates to SUOX, which is a much slower enzyme. Now I will say, I've never fact checked this piece of information. This is just how it was taught to me about 10 or so years ago. But the idea is that SUOX is much slower and it can become overburdened if CBS is shooting down like, you know, one after the other after the other. So what is said to be helpful for people who appear to have sulfur uh, toxicity or like excess sulfur is molybdenum supplements. Now, if you look at a molybdenum supplement, they're all super, super, super high dose. So I would probably even like break one open and sprinkle out half, but molybdenum is one of the cofactors for this particular enzyme. So I'll draw that in here, MO. That's one of your supplement considerations, possibly. Another one is up here, CBS itself needs vitamin B6, And if my memory serves me, it might also need some magnesium. That one's a little bit hazy to me. You can fact check me if you want, but it wouldn't hurt to take a little bit of magnesium. And then CSE is another vitamin B6 dependent enzyme. So nutritionally speaking, I would want to make sure that you're getting enough vitamin B6, magnesium, and perhaps molybdenum through your diet. And maybe that you're not eating too much dietary protein. I know this is a, a point of recent debate, what constitutes too little or too much, but maybe balancing your protein intake could help reduce what's coming down into this pathway. Um, but one of the things that I wanna mention here again is that we've got the homemade hydrogen sulfide here, here, and there's actually another one offshoot that way. Again, I, I hope I made the point that this chemical is not intrinsically bad, particularly when it's made by your own cells in your own body. But there's another kind of layer of complexity, like I said, with the, with the genetic SNP piece. But here's the thing. Two of these compounds, glutathione and taurine, are so important for detoxification and inflammation and the immune system and tissue building and tissue repair. These are really important chemicals, and this is why I personally never recommend a low sulfur diet to anybody, regardless of diagnosis, for more than a week or two, max. And honest to God, it genuinely terrifies me to go into Facebook groups and see that people have been on a low sulfur diet for months or heaven forbid years in hopes of treating hydrogen sulfide SIBO. A, I don't find that that works miraculously well. If it does work, it's just a Band-Aid. But also, I think that that's the sort of thing that's going to tip that person towards more inflammation, a more dysregulated immune system, poorer blood flow, poorer trafficking of nutrients, poorer detoxification, poorer bile flow. The list goes on and on. 
So if you are one of those people who's stuck on a low sulfur diet, even if you feel like it has been working for you, I implore you, please do everything in your power to reintroduce the high sulfur foods so that you can detox and make bile and do all these important pathway things. And yes, you might make more hydrogen sulfide because of it, but that actually might be a pretty cool thing. Of course, if you're sitting there thinking, yeah, lady, that sounds great. I would love to get off this sucky diet that I'm on, but I can't because I feel bad. Hang tight for the next video. We're going to be talking about the other side of the coin next time. So here we talked about endogenous or homemade hydrogen sulfide. In the next video, we're going to be talking about bacterial derived exogenous hydrogen sulfide. And that's where I think a lot more of you are probably feeling stuck. I just made this video because this is a really big apples to apples versus apples to oranges kind of conversation. I find when I go into the hydrogen sulfide SIBO forums, or if I see posts about hydrogen sulfide, I'm frequently seeing people recommend molybdenum and vitamin B6 and talk about CBS SNPs in the context of hydrogen sulfide SIBO. And I wanted to just separate them out once and for all and tell you that these are separate things, even though they are forming the same molecule, but even the fate of that molecule and the purpose that it serves in the body is totally different when we're talking about gut-based versus tissue-based hydrogen sulfide. So hopefully I articulated that well in this video. If not, I have failed you as a YouTube teacher. I don't know what to say. Uh, let me know in the comments if I did a good job articulating that. But in the meantime, if you are sitting there and your head is spinning and you're thinking, great, well, now I know that my diet is making me more inflamed and more dysfunctional, but I don't know how to get off of it and I don't really want to just watch another video and figure it out on my own, check out FODMAP Freedom. I'm going to put a link down in the description and the first comment if I remember to do so. Basically, this is my group coaching program and we get fabulous results, yes, even with people who have been told that they have hydrogen sulfide SIBO or hydrogen sulfide-based dysbiosis. And I know that a lot of people firmly believe that their case is too special or too advanced to be helped in a group program, but my students have repeatedly told me, this is different, this is special. I had no idea it was going to be this great when I got into it, and they took the leap of faith. And I mean, they're glad that they did. And to be perfectly frank, it has a money back guarantee on it. So if you go through my program and apply what you learned and we do the coaching and we try to help you and we are unsuccessful, I'm just going to give you all of your money back anyway. So in my mind, it's very low risk for you and I just really want to help you. So if you are interested at all in healing your body in 2024 and getting past SIBO or dysbiosis or whatever your ailment might be, Check out FODMAP Freedom. I would love to meet you and I would love to help you and make 2024 the last year you ever have to think about the word SIBO. Hey guys, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe, ring the bell, click the like button and leave a comment down below with the videos that you would like to see me do next. Doing all of those really helps support the channel and support my efforts in making as many videos as possible for you guys. Thanks so much and I'll see you in the next video.